Welcome to Finance in Excel video number 83. Hey, if you want to download this workbook for chapter 9, click on the link directly below the video and scroll all the way down to the Excel class section. Hey, in this video, we get to see how to estimate future cash flows and then use those estimations to calculate net present value and internal rate of return and payback. Here are a bunch of assumptions. We're uh, assuming based on some research and our past uh, records that we can sell 30,000 of a new product. Our price is going to be $10 each, $10 each. Let's say uh, these are boomerangs. So we're going to wholesale them for 10 bucks each. Our variable cost is 750. The life of the project is going to be uh, three years. R required rate of return is going to be 0.175. We have fixed cost of $10,000 a year. Fixed cost of, of course, things like rent, administrative costs, things that are not going to change over the life of uh, the investment. The investment, that means the cost, uh, is going to be 110000 to take on this project. Depreciation method for this example here, we're going to assume straight line, although the tax depreciation method is a more relevant one. We'll see videos later on for that. Salvage value is a zero. Removal of, uh, cost of that will be 1000 those will offset, so the final value will be zero. Networking capital um, at time zero is going to be 10,000 bucks. Now, networking capital, how come we have to consider networking capital? Well, things like cash um, to pay bills for the project, uh, accounts receivable, inventory, accounts payable, all those things go up when you take on a new project. So this is like networking capital is the difference between current assets and current liabilities. So you always have to include that in your calculation, just like you have to include uh, the investment of the, f the long term asset, right? Your short term networking capital. Uh, recover uh, this is the first time we've seen this in a calculation. So when we bring on a new project, we're going to have to increase networking capital, so we're going to, it's a cash flow out. Ah, but at the end we recover it. So that means that once this project ends, then, you know, the inventory, the accounts receivable, the accounts payable, the cash associated with the project will uh, go back down to zero. So at time zero, you subtract net networking capital. At the end, you add it back in. Our tax rate is going to be 0.34. All right, we have a lot of calculations to do before we can get to our bottom line here, which is calculate net present value, IRR, and payback. All right, well, the first thing is depreciation. Now, it, we could just put zero, right? Because salvage value is how much you're going to sell it for. You're going to sell it for junk. Removal cost is uh, 1000 bucks, so these offset each other. So um, straight line, we're going to say the original cost minus the salvage value, right? That's how much we get a thousand bucks in for it. Oh, but we're immediately going to add back in the removal cost because that is a cost. Close parentheses divided by, and our life of our project is three. So there's our annual straight line depreciation. Now we're going to calculate what's called pro forma income statement. This means pro forma just means we're estimating for the future. And for our relevant cash flow analysis to get to cash flows for net present value, we're not going to include interest. Interests are considered other places. That is not a cash flow from assets. It's a cash flow to or from creditors. So interest is not included here. I put in the textbook, they say net income, but I I like to say net income, not considering interest, because it's not really net income. All right, our total revenue. Now, all these are going to be calculation based off of our assumptions. So our total revenue, equal sign, and I have to find my. Now, there's the unit sold. There's the price, and there's the variable cost. Now, notice price and variable cost, uh, total revenue, which is from the price and variable cost, same order. So I can go like this the units, and I'm going to hit the F4 key, times price. Right here will give me 30,000, but when I copy it down, that green one will move down to the 750. Control-Enter, and then I copy it down. 
you can see that that worked just fine because we locked that one. I can already see I wrecked my uh, line, that underline there, and I don't think this will work. Um, fill without uh, fill fill without formatting. Nope, it was already wrecked. So I'm going to click in that cell Control One, and I'm going to go to Border. And I'm going to select uh, this one right here. Click on the top, and then come down here and click OK. Now, oh. I don't know why that's not showing up. Let's try that again. Control 1. Something odd going on here. Control Z. That why well, I clicked the wrong one. That's why. Control Z. Why well, I must be asleep. Control Z. There we go. I must be asleep at the wheel. Control 1. It's here and down here. That one and down here. I'm really asleep. Just to show you what, uh, if you have the formatting here and you copy it down, right? It goes away, but you hit the smart tag and say fill without formatting. And so it doesn't bring the formatting down. When you copy something, it brings the content and the formatting. All right, gross profit, we're going to say, oh, all of our revenues minus our variable costs. Our fixed costs are from up here. There's the fixed cost right there, so 10,000. Enter. Our depreciation equals this. EBIT, earnings before interest and taxes, gross profit, minus, and I'm going to do the sum of these two. You can go minus, minus if you want. So EBIT, and always very important to consider taxes whenever you're doing this incremental cash flow for valuing and uh, estimating future cash flow. So our taxes are going to be in, as I mentioned before, whenever I do the individual calculation, I am going to use the round. So EBIT times our tax rate, comma, zero for to the integer or dollar. So net income becomes EBIT minus taxes. Now, what we learned in chapter two was operating cash flow is EBIT. We have to add back the depreciation and minus taxes. Well, look at this. We're, uh, you know, finance people, not accountants here, and we're doing cash flow analysis, so our net income doesn't have the interest in it, right? So, and we've just, to calculate this, we said EBIT minus taxes. So actually, if there's no interest, our operating cash flow is just net income plus depreciation. So I'm gonna say, our net income plus our depreciation, because we've already subtracted out that right there. All right, now we got to talk about something else that's called the tax shield approach to calculating operating cash flows. And uh, coming up in a future video, we'll look at some uh, cost-saving projects. Um, and cost saving project just means instead of going out and buying a new machine to make a new product, you can buy a new machine to save money. And this calculation oftentimes it'll get us the same exact answer as this, but it'll be a little bit easier in some situations. Now look at this. Operating cash flow, we say sales minus costs, and costs are everything, all the variable costs and fixed costs. Notice there's no depreciation there. So it's all of the sales minus all the costs except for depreciation, and then you multiply that by one minus the tax, because you have to, for every one dollar, you have to take out your taxes, right? Marginal tax rate. And then you add back in the actual cash inflow of tax savings from recording de depreciation on your income statement. So this is depreciation times tax rate. That is the amount of taxes you save by recording a non-cash expense on your tax. So this equation right here will work just fine. And we can prove it to ourselves. Now, here I use round. Or no, up here we used round on the taxes. Here I'm not going to. You'll see that it's a few pennies off. But it's all estimation, so this it's OK. All right, I'm going to say in parentheses, all of my sales minus variable costs. Well, I already have that right here. This is uh, revenue minus variable cost. So I'm going to click on gross profit minus my fixed cost. All right, so that calculation is that right there, sales minus cost times, in parentheses, 1 minus the tax rate. And I have to scroll up to get that. That's B14. 
Okay. That right there um, is the amount um, of all of our sales and costs except for depreciation and the tax taken out. Now, the only thing we have to add back in is our advantage of non-cash depreciation. So we're going to say depreciation, and I'm just going to get it. Actually, I'm going to get it from there times in my tax rate, too. OK, so this part is the advantage of non-cash tax. And this is just all the other expenses minus the taxes. And you could see we get 55366.67, which rounded up gives us this. All right, and so this is a perfectly viable option. And actually, in some of the future videos, the cost savings one, I'll do this. And even one of the uh, uh, future sales ones, I'll do it this way, too, because sometimes it's just easier to do this. You can do it all in a single cell sometimes, besides, and you don't have to make a whole income statement, and so that's the advantage. All right, oh, I think we're getting pretty close here. Now we can get down to our time 0 to 3, because it's 3 years out, all of our cash flows. Now we're going to have a column for operating cash flows, change in networking capital, capital spending, and then we'll add them all up. So at time 0, no ca operating cash flows. But here we have equals, and I'm going to use this one right here. I'm going to hit the F4 key because we've estimated for this example, this video, it's the same each period. We'll have some videos coming up where they're not the same each period. So for each of the three years, that's our operating cash flow. Cash with a plus uh, because it's positive. Now, uh, at time zero, not only do we buy an asset, but we also invest in networking capital. So I'm going to say negative, and I'm going to have to go up and get my Networking capital investment at time zero. All right. Now, remember, that's accounts receivable, inventory, cash, accounts payable. That has to go up when you, you, know, you have this new project here. Ah, but at the end, we recover it, right? Because when the project winds down, you don't need extra cash for that project. Accounts receivable eventually get paid off. Accounts payable, inventory, all of that goes away. So you assume that it gets. Um, it's a positive. It literally comes back in. Now, this is a cash flow because, of course, you have to increase to purchase networking capital, right? At the end, we get it back, so it's going to be a positive. Capital spending, it's just a negative. So we go up and get that. Invest at time zero. Now, in this example, we didn't sell it for anything. But in upcoming videos, we'll see what happens when we sell it, right? If you sell it, you maybe have a gain or a loss and a tax implication. So we'll have to consider that in future videos. But right here, that's it. That's, on our, that's our cash flows for this project. Equals sum. And I'm going to add up Control-Enter and drag it down. I'm also going to add a cumulative column. Right? So for payback, so we're minus 120, and then down here it will be uh, minus 120 plus this right here. So guess what? Just like we saw in an earlier video, I'm going to use the sum function. I'm going to click on that. I'm going to hit the colon key, shift colon. And if I copy this down, this would be a ridiculous formula. It's the same cell to the same cell. But if I lock this one with the F4 key, that means this is an expandable range. And sure enough, as we add going down, right right here, we'll add this one and this one, which is the same as saying, uh, you know, doing it individually. Control Enter. I'm going to drag it down. So here, you can see we just added those. The range expanded. Here, you can see the range expanded. So it's right, right between these two periods. So year two. So if I put a, a 0, 1, 2, 3, somewhere in the middle of year 3 somewhere. So 2 and a, my mouse is not working. 2 and a little bit when we get to payback. All right, now let's make all of our calculations equals net present value. The rate, I'm going to have to go up and get that. It is RRR, required rate of return. This is the rate that is determined inside the business. They say this is the return we have to earn, something bigger than this, 0.175. That's our rate, period rate. The values, not 0 because this is net present value. So 1, 2, 3, 
and then plus the negative at time 0, plus the time at uh, cash flow at time 0. So there it is. We have a net present value project. Now, uh, net present value project, uh, that's just uh, our first criteria. It says, now we better take a harder look at this project to make sure all of our assumptions are correct. But that's step one. Make You know, you get a positive net present value. That's looking good. Um, make sure everything's, all your estimates and everything are looking good before you proceed further. But this is step one. And then we could also look at IRR. That'll tell us the these cash flow. What is the internal rate of return from these cash flows? And IRR includes time zero. Ooh, 21.25. And finally, we can cal calculate the uh, payback. It's going to be two and a little bit. Now, the way we were calculating this little bit before is we, oh, that's how much is left to collect. And so we'll compare this with using division to next period's cash flows. That's assuming that there's an even uh, cash flow occurrence uh, throughout the year. I'm going to say minus because this is a negative, and then divided by that. 2.14. All right, so uh, that's our introduction to estimating future cash flows. As we go forward, uh, we'll look at maker's depreciation um, and some other uh, important uh, factors that add complications to uh, this first kind of simplified example. All right, uh, see you next video for those exciting complications. See you next video.